170 members of the House of Representatives, you cannot find one person that will put their name on this. One. Because they, be, uh, they don't want to be connected to it. And the people that are running for the first time people are saying this is a bunch of BS. So they first of all wouldn't have, they wouldn't have done this if they weren't going to sign it. I mean, like, were the young guns of the Republican Party to sign this? Young guns, five hundred dollar hair suits, thousand dollar shoes. You know, they went to Gucci to buy clothes to look like they're uh, they're 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 with the you know they're you know we're talking uh, what is it? Uh, uh, basically, they turn around and you can see the Christian Aguilar pants design on the back, five hundred dollar jeans, and basically. Uh, you know, you go over and buy a, sh a, 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 a shirt that basically caught, you know, freshly pressed and tied in a tucked and pointed for five, six hundred dollars mm -hmm. and looked like it. But some of them did go to Walmart, though. And I think they were offended when they found it. You mean common people actually shop? Oh, that sounds so bad. They don't go into these stores. They, they uh, listen, to the, listen to the people. I do listen to people on the left. They said... The Republicans are no different than the Democrats. They do not know. I mean, I, we went to town hall meetings where the guy, instead of dressing like the people in the meeting, has got on a three-piece business suit. Yeah, I don't know where the... <laughs> I mean, that's really connecting with this. You know, it's, it's almost like it's like old style, right? Where they all thought they had to be in the three-piece suit. But it is basically... They, they, it's, but the, every... The, the, the Tea Party oh, is composed of people party. on the right, left, and the middle. It's a conglomeration of the... Actually, what it is, it is the people. Oh, you know what I think it is? is they have this idea that a politician should dress in a certain manner, right? Yeah. In a suit, you know, white shirt. How often do they have colored shirts, even? That's right? right. I mean, uh, typically but, white shirts, right? It, and so that's the politician costume. It's their armor, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, basically, anybody remember Have Gun Will Travel, which is basically on the Western Channel. Paladin dressed, he was a knight without armor dressed in black to, to challenge all of the guys in the white suits. Mm -hmm. But the guys in Congress, right and left, there are no middle. I mean, they, like the Democrats, well, the Republicans have chased out the middle. There are no middle in the Democratic Party. Okay. It's just the left and the far left. But I you know we pledge to uphold the promise of better America, knowing that to whom much is given, much is expected, that the blessing of our liberty. Basically, much is expected. These people, they know. You cannot get a one of them on this pledge. They don't spell out where they're going to cut anything. We pledge to make government more transparent in its actions, careful in its stewardship, okay. and honest in its First opinion. of all, let's throw out this. Think in word transparency. Nobody does anything that is transparent. They pass bills in the middle of the night. I mean, you cannot find maybe more. I've read this stuff. I've actually read it. Tell me a member of the, of the people that basically they won't. First of all, they don't even read it. They don't read it. It's done by staffers. It's put together by congressional staffers in the middle of the night, and then they uh, they basically pass it and send it to the president who doesn't read it. But well, our lawyers have read it. There's, you know, like I said. You know, now that the bill is passed, now we can read it and know what's in it. Well, you know, I think they also have this excuse, well, we didn't read it. Well, they, and they intentionally don't read it, even if they have the opportunity. I know. They said, Remember, I mean... Basically, they said nowhere in this pledge is a pledge that they will read the legislation before they pass it. Nowhere in it. I think that they intentionally, it's, it's like they intentionally don't, so they always have an excuse. <laughs> Yeah, but here's here's the thing. Our plan offers a clear and uh, clear and clearly different approach. One in which the people had the most say and the best ideas trump the most entrenched interest. Well, no, that doesn't work because the people on the right, they're hung up on gay rights, they're hung up on abortion, and they're hung up on um, uh, on basically uh, turning the country back into a Bible spouting bunch of gun toting beer drinkers. Which is the problem with many for the on the Republican Party? That's right. The people on the the people the Tea Party people, uh, the, the, there's a book for the people of the people and by the people, not for the party of the party and by the party. Which is why the Republican Party hates the Tea Party people, and they also hate the fact. I mean, Carl Rowe just deemed just pissed off at the fact that you know, well, that woman is going to cost us. Well, that woman's five points down now. That woman is five points down, and now it's statistically tied with the guy. And he said, well, she's still hurting our purposes. Uh, I mean, notice the Republicans tend to treat women candidates like they, 
Okay, if they would basically see an honest brave chick, you know, wearing a swimsuit, going out in public, being a strong, forceful person in the news industry, they would be so pissed off. But, um, you know, our plan puts forth a new governing agenda that reflects the priorities of the American people, priorities that have been ignored, even mocked by the powers that be in Washington. Um, these are full, okay, a, a plan to create jobs and economic uncertainty and make America more competitive. Well, you have to tell the people what you're going to stop spending on. Where are the cuts coming? And uh, you're smart. Yeah, in order to pay the bills, taxes are going to have to be raised, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you also need to have incentives because right now there's a disincentive for people to be productive yeah. and make money. I mean, because you know, okay, let's put it this way. I mean, do, do away with the disincentive, that's a, a starter. Walter Mondale said probably the most truthful thing that has ever been said by a politician. It cost him, it, made it, it was a 49 state loss when he said, you know, he won't tell you we're going to have to raise taxes, but we're going to have to raise taxes. And he said, I'm telling you we're going to have to raise taxes. That finished Walter Mondale off. The Republicans have to raise taxes. Because the problem well, the is... the Democrats have to raise... Whoever's in office needs to raise... Unfortunately, it's not really popular. No, because it will be done. It does not make any difference who does it. Taxes are going to go up. The problem is oh, what Obama did, he knew that the health care bill was going to be killed because it's unconstitutional. The taxes can't be killed. The taxes cannot be killed. There's not going to be enough... Uh, there's not going to be enough strength in either uh, by the Republicans or the Democrats to change anything. And it's probably going to be this way for another four years. Between the taxes are all going to be hit. Everybody's going to be hit by these taxes, which are not going to go to reduce the deficit. They're going to go for government spending. So. Well, actually, that would be part of it, is stop the spending. Yeah. But, uh, like, um, it said, by permanently stopping job-killing tax hikes, families will be able to keep more of um, their hard-earned money and small business, whether they have the ability to need to invest in economy and stop growing. Okay, the, it, they don't say how they're going to do it. How are you going to do it? The, the Obama stuff has already been passed with the help of Susan Collins and um, I don't and even think Lydia Snow. I don't even think they're real Republicans. No, they're, they're liberal Democrats. I mean, they're, they're Republicans. They're moderate Democrats. They're Republicans by name and party. But other they than basically that. they couldn't get elected. Okay, John McCain was a Democrat. He was a lifelong Democrat. Arizona basically he had to pick a state where he could run. Arizona's Republican, so he had to become a Republican, folks. This guy is a party loving, fly boy, good looking, carouser, drunk. Basically, he went fooling around with another woman while his wife was recovering from a near death experience. You know, she she nearly got killed in Ottawa. She's in a wheelchair. I mean, this guy is the guy you want for president of the United States. Is a guy that goes off and dates a really hot-looking blonde while his other wife is in a wheelchair. So that that didn't go over well with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, long-term fiscal challenges. We were reforming the budget process, the budget process to ensure that Congress begins making decisions that are necessary to protect our entitlement programs for today's seniors and future generations. That Obama did that. I don't know. He cut five hundred billion dollars out of seniors programs, folks. That's not real popular. I mean, you're talking, I'm going to explain it in simple terms. What is the meaning of end of life? Death. What are those panels called? They're end of life panels, which means they are what panels? Death panels. Yeah. They're going to end. Um, how much is the, okay, you're, say you're, you're a healthy senior citizen and your wife has got cancer. How much is your life worth, wife's life worth to you? Is it everything. Worth, yeah, is it worth $93,000 a year in medicine? It's worth everything. It's not worth it to Obama. No. It's not worth it to the person he put in charge. He, the, the, they're trying to, one size fits all health care system. I mean, I'm, I'm in very good shape. I mean, I've got a busted leg, busted ankle, I'm working. Not because I have to. I mean, she, she gets upset when I, I do stuff. But if you notice at times I sit there and hang on a lot of things like I'm doing now. But still, one size does not fit all for people my age. We have guys that are like Lloyd Bridges who was never sick a day in his life until the last few weeks of his life. We have um, Tony Curtis who was an athlete all his life and got rheumatoid arthritis. 
and he wasn't fat and out of shape. The medicine that he was using pumped him all up. But other than that, the guy was...